大家好，歡迎大家收咧《將長談》呢個節目，我哋節目主持人姚永安。咁啊，新冠疫情咧，就相信咧已經離開咗我哋啦。咁啊，三年嘅疫情咧，大家真係好大嘅折騰。咁但係咧，同一時間咧，我哋都有一個叫做 OPI crisis 嘅，就濫藥危機咧，仍然喺我哋社區度出現。咁而呢個啊濫藥危機所造成嘅人命傷亡呢，係比起呢個啊新冠疫情呢，係還要更加多嘅。咁我哋都知道啦，喺呢個疫情期間呢，就政府就推出咗一啲好嚴厲嘅防疫政策啦。咁但係對於呢個濫藥危機，咁我哋嘅政府又會用啲咩方法嚟處理同埋對待呢？咁啊，好高興啊，亦都好榮幸，就請到 BC 省嘅專責廳長啊 Jennifer White Sai 咧，就嚟做我哋嘅嘉賓，接受我哋訪問嘅。啊 ，Minister， welcome to our show。Hello， it's a pleasure to be here。Thank you， Gabriel。好啦，嗱，首先我要問一問你啦，就以我所知咧 ，BC 省從前咧就冇一個咁樣嘅廳嘅，你個廳咧就叫做啊 Ministry of、um, Mental Health and Addictions。咁啊，點解零零舍舍 Eb 係要委任你去啊掌管呢個廳？你嘅工作其實係做啲乜嘢嘅咧 ？Well,、um, Gabriel, when our government first formed in 2017, we understood that、uh, the toxic drug crisis was really taking off. We were、uh, losing uh, uh, about four people a day at that time to toxic drug overdoses. Uh, we knew there was a real mental health and substance use crisis in our province, and our government thought that it was very important that we have a dedicated ministry、um, to pull together all of our cross-government resources to work with our health authorities, to work with providers and advocates, to try to find a way forward uh, with uh, to to address this、uh, the, this devastating、um, crisis. And so this ministry was、uh, what was created. We work very closely with the Ministry of Health. We work、uh, closely with our part with、uh, partners in in、uh, in the Ministry of Housing, in Social Development, in Ministry of Children and Family、uh, Development to really try to bring a cross government approach to how we're addressing mental health and addictions. 嗱，我知道咧，就新冠疫情咧，就對我哋個社社區啦，我哋嘅社會啦，我哋經濟啦，同埋人命咧，係造成好大嘅傷害嘅。咁啊，好好好，而家就似乎已經離開我哋啦。但係呢個 opioid crisis 咧，濫用危機咧，其實亦都係對我哋社區造成好大嘅傷害嘅。啊，廳長，你可唔可以同我哋比較一下，究竟新冠疫情同埋呢個 opioid crisis 啊嗰個即係傷害係點樣咧？ Well, you know, it was in 2016 when our public health、um, officer declared the opioid crisis to be a public health emergency,、um, and that that also is part of what spurred our our government to、uh, create this ministry and to undertake this、uh, this very focused work. In the early years of our ministry, which was the first ministry in Canada dedicated to mental health、um, and and addictions. One of the one of the important、um, pieces of work we did was to map out our sort of our ten year plan called Pathway to Hope, and it is what is guiding、uh, it is what is guiding our work、uh, on the opioid crisis, on building out、um, mental health、uh, supports, and it really focuses on children, on young people, on wellness for for children and youth, supporting Indigenous led solutions. Addressing、um, issues related to substance use and trying to build an integrated system of mental health supports for people that that is really integrated with our with our healthcare system, and we、uh, we we started、uh, out on that、uh, on that path and made some very good progress in the first couple of years of our ministry, and we actually saw that reflected in a dramatic decrease in、um, in deaths due to. Toxic drug poisoning in 2019. So we know that the efforts that we made in the early years to increase treatment, to access to treatment, increase access to counseling, our our major、uh, st- uh, stigma anti stigma campaign to talk about who who is it that、uh, who is dying from the toxic overdrug、uh, uh, the toxic uh, uh, drug drug crisis. All of those measures that we were taking to also scale up harm reduction approaches. That was all having a really big impact because we saw a significant decrease in the number of people dying from、uh, the toxic drug、um, uh, crisis, 
And then of course, in 2020, we were hit with the COVID-19 pandemic and we had a second public health emergency declared, one that was extraordinarily urgent, <clears throat> global in scale, and had, as you know, a dramatic impact on all of our communities. And frankly, our work, our progress on the opioid crisis was really set back by, um, uh, by, the, uh, by, the, by the COVID pandemic. One of the one of the things that occurred over the course of the uh, in the early um, in the early days of the pandemic is that we found um, increasingly um, toxic concentrations of fentanyl in drugs. Um, it initially in, in the early uh, the early months of 2020, the concentration of fentanyl detected in illicit drug deaths was between four and six per, uh, four and eight percent. But by November 2022, after we had been through more than more than two years of the pandemic, that had increased to 17%. And we are now finding um, increasing amounts of benzodiazepines in the illicit, illicit drug supply. And that actually can't be reversed by, uh, uh, by an intervention such as naloxone. So what we've been seeing is a, is a real change in um, just the levels of toxicity in, in drugs that, are, that, that people are using. And that is really contributing to um, the, um, the the ongoing uh, the, the ongoing crisis that that people are experiencing. But you know, it's so important that we uh, that we continue to tackle this issue from every single angle. So we are continuing to invest in um, uh, invest in counseling, community counseling services, when, so that people there's somebody that people can call when they need when they need help. We're building out treatment beds. We are making significant investments in child and youth um, mental health. Um, and we are ensuring that we uh, are continuing to support, uh, to support harm, a harm reduction approach. 我知道,就這個濫藥危機,就自2016年以來,就在BC省就死了超過11萬1000人,這麼犀利的。很多人都覺得藥死亡的人都是一些在街頭的無家可歸者 Yeah, and you know, Gabriel, this is what is, was so important about the, uh, the work that we started to do in the or early in our mandate around talking about just who is at risk of um, of of, a, of an overdose uh, of an overdose death what we know from the coroner that in, uh, from the coroner is that in fact um, 70 percent of those who are dying are between 30 and 59 years old and 79 percent of those people are male so really this is um, this is a crisis that primarily affects um, young and middle-aged uh, middle-aged men. The other really troubling um, aspect of this is that we know from the coroner that more than half of the people who die from toxic drug poisoning were found alone. They were using drugs alone. And what that speaks to is the kind of fear and stigma that is associated with drug use. And it is so important that we use every tool in our toolbox to take away that stigma and to take away that fear so that people can reach out for uh, care, can reach out for support, can reach out uh, and access a treatment path. Um, we, uh, you know, I was very moved um, with uh, Catherine Botchford's story. Catherine stood with us uh, when we um, uh, announced the, uh, the decriminalization pilot project to last month. She stood with us and told her story about uh, finding her husband, who was a professional sportscaster. Um, she didn't know that he had used drugs or was using drugs. Uh, she found him. Uh, he had died from a toxic, from toxic drug poisoning. And I think that that is just that goes to show that uh, this is uh, this is a uh, this is a scourge that affects people in all walks of life. I hear from so many people, parents whose um, you know uh, 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 whose whose adult children were professionals who worked with with them, but who um, were using drugs for one reason or another and um, wound up with a, with a toxic supply. So we really, we developed a campaign that talked about who it is 
um, that is at risk of a toxic um, a toxic overdose. And um, these are, this is the appeal we want to be making to, to everyone, is to remove the stigma, remove the fear, encourage people to reach out uh, for help. And so that's the importance of really addressing, uh, addressing the, the, the stigma piece of this, because this is a, this is a I, I, I speak with so many people who have had experiences in their family or in their circles of um, someone who has uh, had a had an experience with an overdose or who has lost someone to the toxic drug crisis. This is a, this is a society wide problem. Yeah, I don't know if this is because you said this is the reason. In fact, we see that in the past, in many countries, especially Canada and America, are using the law and order method of law and order. 嚟處理呢個毒品問題或者濫藥嘅問題嘅，咁但係咧就我睇到近年咧就好多國家好多地區咧都係嘗試用一個新嘅方法係去處理嘅，咁其實你可唔可以同我哋講下呢方面咧 ？Well, you know, I think that it is important that we are again, this is really a kind of a problem that requires that we use all of the tools in our in our toolbox and Part of the objective of, um, of uh, our decriminalization exemption with the federal government is to decriminalize people um, who are using drugs so that um, we can divert uh, the energies of frontline law enforcement to dealing with um, producers, to dealing with traffickers. So we want to make sure that our, our law enforcement have the resources that they need to actually be dealing with criminal behavior um, and, and so that they're not actually engaged in dealing with what really is, in, in most cases, uh, a healthcare issue. So it's really about um, substance use disorder being, and drug use being a, a, a medical, uh, a medical um, issue, a healthcare issue, not a criminal one. 嗱啊，你就講緊呢個啊 decriminalisation 呢個字啦，咁就係中文就非刑事化啦。咁啊，究竟即係非刑事化少量毒品同埋呢個合法化毒品係有啲咩分別咧？咁同埋就係仲有啊，即係當即係卑斯省係要做出呢個啊試驗嘅計劃，就係將少量嘅毒品係啊藏有係是作為非刑事化嘅時候咧。咁究竟即係喺即係我哋社會裏邊啊，唔同界別啊，譬如話醫學界啊、啊執法人員啊，甚至係啊教師啊、啊或者你嘅政治嘅對手啊等等，佢哋係點樣睇即係呢個議題咧？同埋我亦都好想問下你，究竟即係啊啊呢個非刑事化同埋呢個合法化個分別係乜嘢咧 ？So I think it's a really important point,、um, Gabriel, that we that we understand that. What we refer to as decriminalization does not mean legalization. So the drugs that are at at, at issue here, um, opioids, uh, uh, cocaine, MDMA, methamphetamine, they are illegal under the Controlled、um, Drugs and Substances Act, and they remain illegal. What has what what is occurring is that we have applied to the federal government for an exemption for those certain drugs. So that individuals who are carrying very small amounts for personal use, 2.5 grams or less, that those individuals will not,、um, if, or if they are found in possession of those small amounts for personal use, they will,、uh, they will not go down, be, be sort of taken down a criminal path. They won't be arrested. They won't be charged.、Uh, they will、um, instead receive a resource card. From the, the the police officer who may be interacting with them, that points them to where they can get some help、um, and some and some supports. So it is about decriminalizing that individual, so that the individual、um, has a has a pathway,、uh, an, one one additional pathway、uh, to access care and support.、Um, this is not about legalization at at all, not at all. This is this is a call that we have responded to. That、um, that that police officers have have asked for, that public health has asked for, frontline physicians have asked for this, people who use drugs have asked for this, advocates. We stood with a, a very wide、um, and diverse range of people and partners who form a、uh, an advice table for us.、Um, uh, they they meet monthly. They helped.、Uh, they contributed to the、um, the development of our application to. The federal government for the exemption, and they will continue to advise us and work with us on the implementation of this of this pilot project.
嗱，我知道啦，就媒體同埋好多時政治對手都會係即係集中就係講呢個所謂非刑事化少量毒品呢樣嘢啦。但係即係以邊啲省政府嚟講，尤其是喺你嗰個工作上面、啊，去處理呢個 opioid crisis 係咪淨係呢一部分咧？你可唔可以同我講下，即係你成個計劃其實係點樣嘅咧 ？Yeah, and I and I should say that really are you know one of the important things that we um that that we did in the legislature last year was that we our health standing committee our Select, Select Standing Committee on Health, which is an all-party committee, met to specifically review and talk about and hear evidence from from British Columbians about the opioid crisis. And uh, I think what was remarkable about that process um, was one, the public engagement. I mean, people in the public are very concerned about this this issue. People who have lost loved ones. Who um, who are concerned about losing loved ones uh, are you know public health physicians who support people who um, who who use drugs who are helping them to try and find uh, appropriate treatment paths. We heard from um, uh, close to a thousand British Columbians uh, about this issue, and all of the recommendations that came out of that report were endorsed by all parties in the legislature. We all know that this is a crisis that we have to work together to solve. So all of our, uh, all members of that committee, all parties in the House were the, the, the NDP, the Liberals, the Green Party, were all in agreement that we should proceed with decriminalization, that we should proceed with supporting a safer supply, a prescribed safer supply, that we need to support um, ramping up uh, treatment, that we need to support Um, a sense of urgency around all of this, and I'm very grateful to all of the members who served on the committee and all of the parties in the House for their commitment to working with our government to advance um, to, to to make to make progress on on this on this issue. Um, and 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 it is really because we have to do we have to come at this from all different angles. We have to make sure that we are investing in continuing to invest in treatment. We have about 3,200 treatment um, and recovery beds in British Columbia. That has increased by we've increased. That number includes the hundreds that we have opened since we formed government. We have substantially increased our investments in child and youth mental health. 55 million dollars uh, for integrated child and youth teams that are um, in school districts. That pull together schools and uh, healthcare and uh, Ministry of Children and Family Development to have mental health services um, all working together. That put the child at the center of those efforts and wrap the services around them. And those teams, we've got the we had the first one、um, up and running in Maple Ridge. We're in Comox. We're we've announced one in、uh, we're in Mission. We have them in、uh, in in five communities now and working on expanding、uh, the the number of school districts who will have one of those teams. We have、um, built up the Foundry、um, the Foundry system. The Foundry is a Basically, a, a health and wellness center for、uh, for children and youth, and、uh, we have 13 foundries operating in different communities across the province. We're going to open another nine foundries、um, by the time our expansion is is complete. And in those centers,、uh, youth can access in a really barrier-free way. They can get drop-in counseling. They can access primary health care. They can get、um, mental health、uh, supports.、Uh, those are very important、um, places where. Um, children can get access. Children and youth can access supports upstream, because the key is we want to be intervening early, as early as we can, to just to prevent problems from getting larger, and to prevent kids from winding up with with bigger problems、um, as they, you know, as, as they get older. We have doubled our children,、uh, child and youth、um, treatment beds.、Uh, we are opening opening more、um, detox beds across the province. So. You know there are there are very many different ways that we need to intervene and provide supports to British Columbians、um, when it comes to mental health and substance use, and we, we really are working in all of those areas. The other thing we really need to do is we need to keep people alive so that they can get to treatment. And I have heard that over and over again from people who are in recovery or who have recovered, that if they if they had not had access. To harm reduction, if they had not had access to a prescribed safer supply, 
they would not have made it to the point where they could take that next step and access recovery. So it is about uh, making sure that we're supporting people all the way along the continuum of their journey. 我相信很多人以為戒毒是唯一或者最好的方法甚至乎有藥引癖的人就是混在一個戒毒所裏面或者甚至一個島上面你戒咗之後才可以回回你出來這個是否最好的方法呢嗯 what I can say Gabriel is that um, I, I you know I know that um, that, that in, involuntary um, involuntary care is a tool that is used in some circumstances. For example, in circumstances where there is treatment required for people who are not uh, deemed not criminal re criminally responsible for, for criminal activity, or for people who are detained involuntarily under the Mental Health Act. So there are provisions, there are tools in the Mental Health Act for physicians to admit people on an, in, uh, on an involuntary basis to, to a hospital for, um, for, um, for, for treatment. And I, 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 physicians make use of that tool and uh, what the premier has asked me to do is to look at uh, is to look at assessing and expanding supports for people who are causing detrimental harm to them to themselves or to others as a result of mental health or substance use. So, you know, we're really looking at how we can get people the help that we need uh, that they need when they need it in the most appropriate way, but we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, we are not causing um, unanticipated uh, adverse impacts that is really important so um, so that that's what that's what we're looking at in uh, in, in that regard yeah, yeah. 西人或西亞大西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞西亞
pharmaceutical grade medications that are safer alternatives to illicit street, dr street drugs, the, the drugs that we know are, are, are killing people. So these drugs can play a, uh, an important role in stabilizing people um, so that they can um, actually get themselves to a point where they, uh, where they can find housing, where they can consider treatment options. But this stabilization piece of uh, sort of phase of things is really, really important separating people from the toxic drug supply so they have a chance to stabilize their lives and move, take the next step and maybe get to recovery, uh, to treatment and then to recovery is a really important um, element of, um, of what we're doing. Again, it's one tool in the toolbox um, to try to keep people alive so that we can connect them to care and treatment. OK， 我諗起即係好似香港同事，我哋經常聽到一個叫美沙酮呢個名詞 methadone， 咁呢度其實都有用嘅。咁啊，仲有一條問題，我想問聽長啦，即係其實呢，就二零一八年呢，咁啊聯邦政府就係將呢個大麻合法化嘅。咁之後，我哋睇到呢，即係差唔多喺街度，差唔多每一條街、每一個角落、每一區呢，都會有啲大麻店出嚟嘅。咁啊，之前大家好擔心呢，就哦，你大麻合法化之後，會唔會造成呢個食大麻就泛濫啊？啲年青人個個去咗食大麻，啲人冇心理做嘢啊，有好多交通意外啊，出咗好多社會嘅問題。咁但係好似過咗幾年之後又唔好覺喎，咁我又想問下你啦，即係從即係聽長嘅角度，你睇下究竟即係呢個大麻發發之後對 BC 省個影響係咪真係咁大咧 ？Well, you know, I think you know we we are you know government's been very involved in、uh, in regulating um uh, uh marijuana the the access the the, can, the cannabis supply since、uh, the federal government legalized um cannabis and of course that is a very different thing. Than what we are talking about in terms of、uh, in terms of, of of opioids, the the project, the pilot project that we have around、uh, decriminalization is very narrow in scope and very tightly controlled. It、uh, has、um, eyes from Health Canada on it, looking at the evaluation. There are、um, there is、um, uh, health researchers are monitoring the program. We have、um, a lot of engagement from police. Um, because we're relying very much on on police as partners, really, in this、uh, in in our decriminalization、um, project. They've called for it, they、uh, they support it, they have、uh, up, taken up the training that's associated with it in huge huge numbers. So we really are changing the conversation to ensure that we are doing everything that we can when it comes to、um, uh, toxic illicit drugs,、uh, trying to separate people from that supply. Trying to de to take away the, the 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 fear and the stigma. There's really no comparison between what's happened when it comes to cannabis、um, and and the rollout of that and what we're doing on with respect to the opioid、um, the opioid public health emergency. OK， 好多謝廳長今日嚟同我哋討論呢個咁重要嘅議題。加拿大係一個啊人道嘅社會，咁啊當我哋社會裏邊咧係有數以千計嘅人咧，因為呢個濫藥。危機而喪命咧，啊政府同埋人民咧都係唔能夠坐視不理嘅。咁好明顯咧，而家邊啲省政府咧係以一個好大嘅決心，希望咧係能夠解決呢個問題。咁啊，其實咧就同樣嘅事情喺其他國家度發生嘅，譬如話好似啊葡萄牙，從前咧呢個濫藥問題咧呢、這個危機係非常之嚴重嘅，甚至犀利過我哋嘅。但係當佢用醫療嘅啊政策係處理呢個啊濫藥嘅時候咧。咁啊，亦都有一個好戲劇性嘅效果。咁啊，而家佢哋嗰邊嘅情況咧係非啊好，我哋好多嘅。咁啊，大家有興趣咧，其實亦都可以 search 下或者 Google 下呢、這個啊叫做 Portugal Model。咁可以睇下其他國家咧係點樣用醫療嘅方法咧係處理呢個濫藥嘅危機嘅。今日時間到呢度，下個禮拜另一個題目同大家繼續討論。拜拜。